Today we're going to look at ecosystems and how they can be replicated in a terrarium environment. In order for one to successfully work, you need a few main components. Let's look at the first component, the most obvious one, light. In the wild, of course, the number one source of light and heat is the sun. In a terrarium environment, that is replaced with an artificial light, in this case, an Arcadia Jungle Dawn. Light is incredibly important since solar energy helps to sustain the lives of the most important things on this planet, plants. You see, plants take solar energy and convert it into chemical energy. Light is absorbed through chlorophyll, the green pigments on most plants' leaves. And carbon dioxide enters the plants through the stomata. The combination of light, carbon dioxide and water allows the plants to make its own food through a process known as photosynthesis. A byproduct of this process is oxygen. All animals in this terrarium require oxygen to survive. A crested gecko will happily breathe it in, whereas creatures such as woodlice and worms require damp conditions to allow oxygen to pass into their systems. In return, all of these creatures release carbon dioxide back into the environment. This carbon dioxide, as well as light and water, are taken back into the plant for the purpose of photosynthesis, and so the cycle continues. Some plants, however, like the snake plant and the golden pothos, do more than just release oxygen back into the air. In a study of house plants conducted by NASA, they found that these plants, as well as others, were great at absorbing and removing airborne toxins from the environment. Now, as well as light, carbon dioxide and oxygen, water is incredibly important to an ecosystem since it is one of life's essentials. The gecko needs to drink it, as well as needing high amounts of water vapour in the air to keep the environment humid. Plants need it to help make themselves food, and as previously mentioned, some smaller creatures need it just to be able to take oxygen into their systems. In the wild, water would of course come from rain, or in a lake, or even in the sea. In a terrarium environment, a rain system can be used, but for some of us, we must manually miss the tank twice a day. Moss and soil help lock in a lot of that moisture. Soil also plays an important role in the terrarium. It's a medium for plants to grow in, as well as providing habitats for a range of invertebrates who play quite a major role in the tank. I use a mix of Zoomed's Eco Earth and Arcadia's Earth Mix. Both are completely natural and safe for animals and plants. Speaking of the residents of the tank, we must look at microfauna and microflora. This includes woodlice, worms, soil mites, springtails and fungi. You see, worms increase the amount of air and water that get into the soil, as well as breaking down organic matter such as dead leaves and then excreting out an organic fertiliser which enriches the soil thus benefiting the plants. Woodlice and springtails also help break down organic waste. This includes dead leaves, fungi and even gecko droppings so I don't even have to clean up after my gecko. Soil mites eat fungi, algae, dead plant matter and also dead springtails. Microflora such as fungi also help break down organic waste. Sometimes their impact can be microscopical and very easy to miss, but sometimes their reach is rather noticeable. You see, when mushrooms germinate from tiny spores, they produce a mass of single cell structures called hyphae. Collectively, a mass of hyphae is called mycelium. Fungus will absorb nutrients from its environment for its mycelium, but it's not all bad because this mycelium actually helps connect plants together through this underground communication that we can't even truly tap into or really be aware that it's even happening. But it is. The mycelium acts like a network so all the plants in the area can communicate. They can share nutrients, boost their immune system, and most importantly, thrive in their environment. Like a grape on a vine or an apple in a tree, the mushrooms are just the fruit of these reproducing fungi. And I don't really need to worry too much about the mushrooms since the woodlice seem to really love eating them. 
So how do my geckos contribute to such a well-run ecosystem? Well, they breathe, defecate and have the means to help pollinate plants and keep microfauna levels down. Now it sounds quite simple and compared to what woodlice and worms get up to in the tank it really seems that way but they do also play a big role. Their droppings become food for microfauna which in turn becomes nutrients for plants. The plants grow, photosynthesize and as they do they release oxygen which is used by my geckos and other animals in the environment and in return to the plants as carbon dioxide. As plants grow, old leaves will die off, those leaves are broken down by fungi, wood lice, soil mites, springtails and worms. They are then returned as nutrients for the plants and so the plant goes on to thrive. Plants produce food, provide shelter, and most importantly, preserve life for oxygen breathing animals like my gecko, like the wood lice, like the worms, like you and me. Of course, with any ecosystem, the terrarium isn't short of pests, but luckily, nature has developed a way of fighting back. You see, nature is very resourceful. In order for an ecosystem to be sustained, it must use everything in its environment. The life and death cycle is one of the main elements of a successful ecosystem. Not only are plants and fungi reclaimed, but the land also claims back the dead animals, whether that be a tiny gnat or a dying woodlouse. But death is not the end. All of these plants, fungi and animals live on, as in death they give rise to new life in the ever-growing ecosystem.